What's going on guys? It has been a minute since I've recorded a video. A lot has happened the last several months. I'm hoping to get back into it. But in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about the CR10, uh, specifically the CR10S, and the various upgrades that I've made to make it print like a champ for me. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, like I mentioned, this is the CR10S that I've had for a little while, uh, not terribly long. I'm gonna go through just kind of one by one. I'll flip the camera around and show you the upgrades I've made, tell you why I did it, and some of the things I'm tinkering with right now. Hopefully it'll help some of you guys. So I'll just start from the very beginning, and that is with the cap tubes. So let's look at those. Okay, so these are the cap tubes or the Capricorn tubes. These are basically just an upgrade to the Bowden tube, which was just this typical, you know, white PTFE tubing that you have on, you know, most kit printers. But the Bowden upgrade to Capricorn, tolerances on the inside of the tube are a lot tighter than what you have on a conventional Bowden tube. And it just seems to be a little more slippery and the filament just just glides a lot better and when you're printing with a lot of retractions you want to make sure that things are just as tight as possible and so this is almost a must-have upgrade if you have a Bowden style system things are just tight and the tolerances are minimized to make sure that you get good prints oh and while I'm here this is kind of a cosmetic thing but these little red clips were printed uh, these are PLA but they just kind of help keep things tidy. The tube and the cabling just kind of snap into it. Just gives it a nice look, nice and clean. Okay, a lot of you know that the CR10s come with a glass print bed, and one thing I have on here is a 300 by 300 PO Poly build surface. This stuff works great. I'm testing it out as part of a build surface video that I'll have coming out later, but I have that on here. It just works, for me, a little bit better and printing straight on the glass. PLA sticks really nice and releases really easily when it's cooled. And here is a nice look at that. There's a nice matte surface here so you get a nice finish on the bottom of your prints. Also this stuff is really durable so you can take a chisel or I've even taken a pocket knife sometimes to pop prints off. Uh, it's really scratch resistant so that's nice because I I'm kind of known for not being the easiest on my printers. Oh, and while I'm here, uh, I have little attachments that go on the knobs just to make it a little bit easier to level the bed. One thing I want to do eventually is upgrade with a BL touch on here, so I'll have mesh bed leveling, but right now everything's manual with these knobs. It's just easier to turn these than it is to mess with the, the tiny knobs that come factory. Okay, so the next thing I did was upgrade the firmware. And a lot of you might already know this, but there was a period where there was a lot of ruckus about Creality and their firmware. Since it's built on top of Marlin, Marlin is an open source firmware. Creality had used Marlin as a foundation for their firmware that's on the machines, but they made upgrades to it. And when people were requesting to get a copy of that code, uh, Creality wasn't giving it to them. Now, again, that has all been remedied. Creality is in the clear now. They're sharing their code, but uh, it caused a little bit of a ruckus. So a lot of people, myself included, um, in order to support uh, open source development, uh, went ahead and reflashed the firmware to run uh, like a pure build of Marlin and not Creality's version. So I am running Marlin 1.1.8 on this machine. Okay, so as long as I've had this printer, I've had weird issues with under extrusion. So the next thing that I upgraded, hoping that it would fix the issue, was the hot end. And I went with this Micro Swiss all metal hot end kit for the CR10 that comes with the heat break, heat sink, block, uh, it even comes with a nozzle. It's 0.6 millimeter um, coated nozzle, so it works well for high temp stuff. Even the, the little Bowden clip here, a Bowden coupling, uh, was included in the kit. So I upgraded that. I know I'm running the uh, E3D V6 on the Hicktop. I really enjoy printing with the uh, all metal hot ends. It's just one less thing to worry about. You know, you know it's going to be built well. Again, this came with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Initially, I tried to keep a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but I upgraded 
on that, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. But you can kind of see here, there is a silicone sock, just like what you get with the uh, E3Ds. So it's nice, uh, it's clean, and has been working pretty well for me so far. Another thing I put on all my Bowden printers uh, while I'm here is this little clip on the Bowden fitting. What that does is that takes the play out of the tube. So if I can get this to focus, basically this tube can move up and down during retractions. And again, that could cause a little slop in your print. So these little clips from Thingiverse work really well to keep that from happening. I have one here in a different style here. Okay, I'm here at the back of the machine. Even after upgrading the hot end assembly, I was still having some issues with under extrusion. And I noticed that the gear on the extruder kept slipping. So what I did was I upgraded the extruder, the stock extruder, which is this guy here. This just straps on top of the uh, stepper motor. And you can see the little arm here. There's the Bowden fitting um, spring. And I think this gear might have been the problem. This is the stock gear that came on the machine. And the teeth on it, I don't know if I can get a good enough shot. Basically, the teeth aren't deep enough. I think that was maybe the issue. So uh, it just wasn't getting a really good grip on the filament. And I could have upgraded this, but I went ahead and put on the CME CNC Easy R extruder. And this thing's just like 35 bucks. The Bowden tube slides right in all the way up almost to the gear. This is a really like flexible filament friendly extruder. Bolted right on, no problem at all. And after I made this upgrade, the thing started printing well. And that is with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So a little bit larger, uh, not as fine of a detail in all directions, but that's okay. You know, this machine um, is going to be used to print larger things anyway, so I'd rather have it do that well um, than, you know, haphazardly print small things uh, that are detailed. So once I did this, it started printing well. And that's pretty much it. Again, to recap, the Bowden tubing has been upgraded to Capricorn tubing. I have little clips on here just to make it pretty. The hot end is an all metal hot end now. The bed has a slight upgrade with this Peel Poly build service, which works really well for me. Leveling knobs on the bottom, running Marlin firmware. The extruder has been upgraded and I'm running that 0.6 millimeter nozzle and it's working really well. So this was a little bit different the way I shot this video. Uh, it's much more off the cuff. I'm holding the camera right now. It's not on a tripod. I don't have a microphone on. So it's really informal, kind of a vlog style. If you like this really quick and dirty kind of style, let me know in the comments. I would love to do this more. It, it will probably allow me to get content out a little bit faster because there's less prep work that has to go into it. Uh, again, you know, these are some things that I did in my CR10. I hope they help you. Maybe you um, got a couple ideas for yourself in here. Uh, I, I would like to eventually upgrade the micro SD card to be a full size SD card uh, with one of those little adapter cables. You can print a bracket uh, to be able to insert a full size SD, which would be kind of nice. I think it might be kind of nice to eventually get some sort of spool holder up on top of the machine instead of using the one on the control box. Uh, maybe put some feet on it for sound isolation. Uh, that's the beauty of 3D printing. You know, we can just tinker and, and mess around with it until we find something that, that works well for us. Anyway, I'm rambling. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. I wanted to show you the little farm I have going. A lot of you probably didn't know that I had a CR-10. You knew that I had this hick top. But I've got this guy actually in my furnace room, which is a pretty drafty room. I've got a video coming up where I'm going to be testing some different build surfaces. I've got some build tech, some gecko tech, some PO poly. Uh, we'll test out a lot of surfaces in a less than favorable environment, and that's going to be this room. Super drafty. Uh, so far, it's printed okay. I've kind of rigged up my control board back here, spool holder. Super, super crude, but it works. I also have 
uh, recently acquired an Ender 2. I'll do a video on this. This is uh, lightly modded. Uh, there's some stuff on here that I think are kind of must-have upgrades. I have a video on that, but that's not what this video is about. Let's get back to that CR-10.